Okay, let's continue to look at the rest of the more frequently used tools. Okay, I'm now going to show you how to change the colour. Okay, so we have selected it and we will go down to the bottom here and pick, well, what colour shall we pick? The pink one, and that's all you do. You can see now the um, status bar has got some information in it and the fill, which is this bit here, is pink and the stroke, you can see, is a very thin black outline. Another way to change the colour is to go up to the uh, fill and stroke palette and you've got a variety of different ways of doing it. Play around with these, but I usually use the wheel. I find it a lot easier. And it's a case of just moving this bit to where you want it. And if you want it lighter, click in the middle and move the button there or there. I'm going to bring it back to... That red. Similarly with the stroke, um, that was the fill, but if you wanted to change the stroke, click on that and we're in RGB at the moment and you can tell because there is this black colour. If you didn't want a stroke then you would click the X there and that's gone, there's no paint. But we'll have a stroke and we'll give it uh, what colour shall we give it? Let's have a blue. It's not very thick, so uh, you can't really see it very well. So that takes us neatly up to the stroke style, and it's naught point something or other. To really show you what I mean, I'm going to be silly and I'm going to put in 6 and press return and you can see you have got that there. Um, but if you don't want it, as I say, go to stroke and then hit that. In line with changing the colour, I want to have a look at the um, eyedropper tool. I'm going to get rid of that. Again, it's, it's underneath here, so if I click on there, and that's where it is. What I'm going to do first is bring a picture in to show you how to use the eyedropper tool. So I'm going up to File and Import and then it goes into my computer and I will go and find a, a photograph. I'm going to pause there and I'll come back to you. I'm going to import this uh, picture, which you'll see in a minute, and you have a choice of embedding or linking. Just to let you know, if you linked the picture, that's all it would be. So if you move the original, the link wouldn't go with it. Whereas if you embed it, it's in it, and it follows it all over the place. So embedding, obviously, is the best thing to do. So click OK. And here is the picture. I thought I'd made it smaller, but obviously not. So I'm going to have to make it smaller. Let's click. Right, that didn't work ah, because I didn't select it. So we'll quickly move it in. No, it isn't a brown picture. Honestly, there is something here. OK, so we're going to change the colour of this here to one in there. Uh, a quick way of choosing the eyedropper is either F7 or D. So I'll do that and there it is. Of course what I forgot to do was, what you have to do is select the object that you want to fill. F7 for the um, dropper and what should we choose? That. And there you can see, or that one, or even dark brown. I'm going to go back to the orange tool 
and then I'm going to get rid of that one so I select it and then click delete so let's get this in the middle okay we're now going to have a look at the gradient tool and there it is and what you do is you click and drag nothing happens oh I know why I've got to select it again we go gradient tool click and drag this is going to be a very simple gradient you can move it all over the place it's a lineal you'll see there's two there's linear gradient and a radial this one is a, a linear one so you can move it but you will have the straight line and you can see that it goes from dark opaque to transparent and you can change however you want it really. Changing the colours and adding more colours we will cover in another video so I'm going to click off that now. One of the, it's not a tool actually in the, the box here but one of the commands which you're going to uh, well, you may not, but I certainly have used quite a lot, is the undo tool. So if we wanted to undo the previous action, we'd go up to edit and undo move, or the hot key, control Z. And as you can see, it moved it there again. Let's do that again. I'll move that over there. Edit move that's much better isn't it the final tool we're going to have a look at in this tutorial is the text tool and you'll find this down here it's the A if we click on that let's take that off so if we click on the A and click on the canvas and type something let's put welcome You'll see that the default colour is black and the default font is sans. You can keep it if you want, but I'm going to show you how to change it. So make sure the text is highlighted or selected, should I say, and go up to the text icon up here. Move that out the way. You will see your text is there with the sans font and that's the font size and all you need to do is either start at the beginning or wherever and highlight one and you will see very quickly that it changes the text and if you use your cursor arrow down just to go through and choose one that you like I quite like that first one actually and that's what I'm going to do and all you need to do is click apply and you'll see it's changed it down here. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to put it into the shiny button and just make it a bit bigger. I didn't change the size in the text uh, palette because I knew I would be doing this. And that's all there is to it. We will be going into more detail on how to use a text tool and some of the embellishments and some fun things. But that for this tutorial folks, that's all. I hope you found it helpful and that you are itching to open up your copy of Inkscape. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on our Facebook fan page. The details are below. We'd really like to hear from you. In the next video, Caroline will be talking about the difference between vector and raster images. And I'm now off to make another tutorial. See you later. Bye-bye.